and if you want to translate in any language, Swahili, Russian, Japanese, for God's sakes, do it. This is not an American problem, this is a global problem. And it goes beyond that because we are in a galactic war, and I'm going to talk about that too. We need to weed out the real patriots. There's a lot of gatekeepers. There's a lot of people who are, I call immature. There's a lot of people who don't connect the dots. They also want to balkanize, and they need to shut up. They need to stop talking because we're all going to die here real soon if we don't stop this. They have two websites, Nutramedical.com and ClayandIron.com. And if you need a nutraceuticals needs consult, and I do them all over the world, you can call and schedule with Michelle, and that's at 888-212-8871. And that's talk number one. So that's just warming up. Now, if you want a little break, we'll give you a break while I get my next talk up. But we've got lots of good stuff for you. This is just warming up. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what you could do. I'm not. I'm not. I think I have an idea here. Uh huh. Okay, cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first. Why don't you adjust it first before I open up the next uh, file? Okay. Okay. Here's what I think it is. <laughs> uh, make sure you had your bathroom break. Uh, the next one we're going to do once you're ready is uh, technologies of the electronic cage, not age, the electronic cage. So just tell me when you're ready. Are we recording soon? Okay. Okay, everybody. Uh, this talk will be very succinct. Even if you've seen a lot about the electronic uh, uh, things that are going on and the mark and the national ID, uh, you're going to see uh, what I call a out of world view and then a zip right in. Uh, that will give you a perspective that maybe you've not seen before. When you do it, you're going to go, oh, my God, you're going to get what I call the anal wink sign. <laughs> like, holy shit kind of sign. And the reason why I say that, and that four-letter word, is because when you see this, you realize how damn close we are to them actually doing it. And this is not a joke, people. Uh, this small number here, you people that are, want to know the truth are what I call the avatars. You're the people who are like the bubbles in the champagne when the hands are put on the champagne bottle in anticipation that the cork is about to be relieved. There are several bubbles that decide to go to the top, and you are those bubbles. The next group are what I call the chain shapers. They're the people that the next wave, I call the, uh, uh, the vast majority of the sheeple, keep their eyes locked on the back end of the chain shapers. Now, they're not necessarily innovators, but they're the people that whatever the chain shapers do, everybody else follows the back end of that sheep, and they do it. Because most of the third wave of the population have levels of consciousness slightly higher than cockroaches or bacteria. They're not really aware, as Einstein said, um, dead at 18, buried at 69. <laughs> I'm going to use that quote that you gave me earlier there, Mark. That was good. I thought, that's good. And, I, and I'm fully capable of trading my quotes with theirs, too. So I'm going to keep it in this mode, so hopefully you'll see it all. Technologies of the electronic cage is, uh, is kind of, uh, I try to use these one-liners. There's basically uh, four abused technologies. Mind control and influencing, and if you look at the book uh, oh, recently by, doc, by uh, Dr. Nick Begich, you've got to get this book. We have it on clayandiron.com, that's C-L-A-Y-A-N-D-I-R-N.com, and you can also get it at... Oh, I, yeah, it's, it's funny. I don't know why it shifted. I didn't do anything, actually, uh, no, no, I just, here, I'll hit that one again, see? Is that good? Do you have dual monitors? Um, no. Do you have double monitors? No, okay. just one. I have a feeling it's the cursor, when you go off the edge of the cursor, that's probably what's moving the image. You think so? Take it all the way to the right. Just move the cursor all the way to the right. Yeah, that's what's doing it. Oh, okay. When you go off the edge. Then it goes off. I better watch it then. Okay. Uh, the first is mind control and influencing, and that technology goes back to things like uh, uh, hypnotism in the 1940s, uh, Nazi scientists, uh, American scientists, uh, people like uh, Dr. Ewan Cameron. 
And I'll just tell you a little uh, interesting anecdote. Dr. Cameron was supposed to have died after his research at the Montreal Neurological Institute mountain climbing in 1967. But I went to medical school in 1973 to 1977, and in 1975, my psychiatry professor teaching our class decided to have a special guest show up at our psychiatry teaching us. And fresh from the grave was Dr. Ewan Cameron. Isn't that interesting? Dr. Ewan Cameron, who died in 1967 mountain climbing, who was one of their favorite sons of mind control at the Montreal Neurological, it was wiping people's minds clean with these mind tanks where they literally, and he showed us all the slides. These are our reprogramming rooms where we completely wipe out the slate. And this is a big tall guy. He's a big strapping Scottish guy who must have been about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six at least. And uh, you can imagine somebody like him with his huge hands on him grabbing somebody and throwing them in one of these mind control chambers. And um, what they used to do basically is to total uh, isolation chambers with sound and light and everything until finally the person became a flaccid empty vessel to be reprogrammed into whatever they wanted. And of course these technologies were used uh, supposedly during the Korean War and afterwards. They used Reikian reprogramming using uh, sexual or using pain and suffering or threats. They use these same technologies with sound and light and so on in Gitmo and in uh, Abu Ghraib in, in Iraq. Uh, the next uh, evil technology is biometric tracking. And it's not just RFID chips that are passive that can be tracked at 120 centimeters from the uh, reader. These are active chips that can be tracked from space. And the global chipset is tracked from the GPS system in Colorado Springs at Schriever Air Force Base Falcon, which is the most secure military facility on the planet. It's three higher levels of security than NORAD. Uh, nanotechnologies, they want to alter your genetics. Uh, they're altering your food now. These GMO foods, I call them GNO Franken foods, and the new nanotech foods are 10 times even more dangerous than the nanotech genetically modified Franken foods. And then quantum computing. And you have to see how they all tie together. So. There's a circle of the electronic cage. And you look at the first, you see the RFID chip at the top, biometric ID. And those biometric IDs, and I was told that this is the way the technology is going to work. They're going to have what's called an opening code to your database, which will be in this huge quantum array, but they'll have it dispersed in other databases. And a lot of the data will be carried on the card that can be read by a reader. The opening code, this is actually what I was told back in 1998, would have something like a three sixes. First six would be a mesh barcode, which will identify where you are on the planet with, three three, with 99 blocks on the Earth, 99 smaller blocks and 99 smaller ones, will identify exactly where you reside. Second would be your uh, age and year, month, day, and international dating system. And the third would be a number based on genetic subtype for your DNA haplotype for transplantation. So based on your numbers, they could know immediately if your organs could be taken and transplanted to someone else just like they do in all the prison systems in the Lao Dai camps in China, which is the most favored satanic nation. Uh, next uh, step is quantum computing. When you have uh, these teraflop supercomputers like Big Blue here in California and even more powerful ones that they won't talk about, like the gallium arsenide supercomputers made with chips that are kept super cool at 200 degrees Kelvin below zero, that can make 100,000 times more calculations than a Cray-4 computer, that has more computing power than all the computers in history, then these can do array modeling of your brain. And they actually have a thing called a virtual cities program. I had employees that were in Denver that were working in the center of the, the virtual cities program is to make a s cybernetic model of every living thing, of every person, of every building, of every road, of every city, of every vehicle in the earth in a cybernetic model, virtual world, in hyperspace in their supercomputer quantum arrays. And I took care of the employees that worked on it. They have it to a tolerance of less than half a centimeter for every single building and every road on the planet. And so they're building this so they have a, a, a cybernetic model of all things. So that's why I want to put an RFID chip in every bottle of water, even every pill. So every OxyContin you have, they will be able to follow from your tongue to the disposal sewage containment facility. Okay? That's the kind of control they're talking about. <clears throat> Predictive modeling. 
at the uh, Stanford University Predictive Modeling Facility at the University of California, San Francisco. In Stanford, they have a predictive modeling plan, and they keep putting more data in, and they do things to perturbate the model, whether they set up a model like uh, Singapore or Abu Ghraib or Iraq. And when they do things, they try to see, how does the model respond? And let's do data gathering. So they gather the data on how the humans, the environment, or people respond, or even inside the military, and they build these model archetypes so they can then set up a modeling program that can then predict based on large populations, what the population will do. And their biggest problem with the new world disorder, or should I call it the old world recycle disorder, is they have dumbed the population down so far that they don't have a response that they can predictively know who's going to bolt when they finally get to a point. And people say, why are you alive, Deagle? You're talking about so much classified information, most people would get shot in the back of the head in five minutes. Look, all my stuff's harassed and my bag's disappeared, like I, I had to borrow a suit tonight because my bag's gone. It'll probably show up after the NSA scans every microfiber, and I think I got microchips in it. They're fools. They're scared that their own people like George Soros and Bill Clinton and senior people in the military will bolt, and they don't know when. So they need us to shake the tree. And the second thing is they try to lie to each other and think that they can control this monster. That's us. Once we, the ants, decide to finally get the wasps that are trying to rule over us like the movie Ants, and they're going to be very sorry because we're not exactly passive sheep. I'm a sheep with big muscles, sharp fangs, and long claws. And I'm totally fearless, and there's a lot of people behind me. If they take me out and kill me tonight or some other day, and there's going to be a lot of dead them before they think that they're going to win. And they're actually gutless wonders is what they are. And I know that my little daughter and my sons and my grandson, Ari Malachi, has got no future because in 10 years, every every property reproducing in any country on earth will be totally under the control of global control. The human beings will only be reproduced in laboratories. That anybody with a polar body analysis indicating any genetic defects will not be permitted to live. That they will be genetically engineering us to die like light bulbs. They'll have total control and tracking of everyone, and they'll be able to even insert thoughts in your mind and even read your thoughts, because they already have these technologies developed in places like the Manager Institute in Topeka, Kansas, University of California, Los Angeles, UC Irvine, John Hopkins in Baltimore, the um, uh, Tavistock Institute in England, and Russian and, and other facilities in Asia and Japan. So you have to understand these technologies are very advanced, and they know them already. And the next thing is biocoded signals. They can actually code specific biocoded signals, and combining it with technology like beamed microwaves, they can directly influence your body and control it, or insert minds, thoughts, use infrasound, uh, tuned mi microwave frequencies, and they can influence or harm or kill you. And they can do these now. So this is not imaginary. So what's the transition? Well, the transition is this. National ID or passports, people say, well, that's not the mark of the beast. Well, let me tell you, it's a baby step away. <clears throat> uh, and you'll see Dr. Mr. Sensenbrenner there kind of staring out with his fat, pudgy little face on that real ID card. And um, the next step is the implantable ID. And you can see the little claw around the side of the face of that young lady there that is uh, getting her ID because it's a good national thing to do. And then finally, you see the brain interface chip. Literally, you know, George 1 of 7. Uh, what they're going to do is they really do want to make a hive mind. And this is not imaginary, and they have the technologies to do it. You need to move the cursor back this way. Oh, to move to the right, and then it'll stop that, right? Good. Can everybody see now? Okay. Now, if we look at this diagram here, you'll see the global terror event. They want a terror event in order to precipitate this. So they got this all modeled and planned. So they have a plan. I don't know when it'll be, but you can tell from their predictive modeling they want the Iranian war, or at least a regional one, even if it's just the mining of the Strait of Hormuz so the oil stops coming from the Gulf. They already know that the Ayatollahs are really easy. You know, they're hair trigger Ayatollahs. All you have to do, and they've already said, you know, uh, Ayatollah Khomeini 
has already said that he will st mind the strait of Hormuz if he even threatened to attack him and his mullahs. They want to create an oil crisis. They like climate crisis. It's good. Good for business. They like tsunamis once in a while, just to stir things up, especially when it's an area of mobile oil in the uh, Asian area around Aceh. And they'd like maybe a little mini ice age over Switzerland and North Germany and Russia. It kind of stir things up a little bit. So they need these things. They need also tell us lies that it's us driving in our SUVs with technology. By the way, we could have 300 mile per hour cars or cars that work on water engines or Tesla technology or methyl hydrates or helium-3, which is being mined right now on the moon. Helium-3 is for nuclear fusion engines, which we have that have already been around for years and decades, uh, used for interstellar travel. They don't want you to know about all these things because it's part of their control matrix they want over you. They want citizens with an RFID chip in your passports. They want them literally in the vaccines. They developed an RFID chip to be put in vaccines at the University of Texas in Austin that is 1 20th the width of a human hair that can be, that can be analyzed and, and measured at 20 to 30 centimeters from the body. They want to be able to quarantine you. They want to have you color coded. They want to make sure they know how, where you travel and how you travel. They want to control your education. They want to know, control a virtual model of what you know and how you know it from your purchases, your books, and everything. So they built a hyperspace model uh, in uh, this virtual world that they have built with this quantum computing, and they have it now, not future. So when you see programs like World of Warcraft, how many ch people have children and grandchildren to play World of Warcraft or other of these large role-play world warfare games? A lot of the uh, tactics and so on are being uploaded by these advanced uh, systems into supercomputer artificial intelligence arrays to actually use this against you with future ROVs because their plan is what's called the 2010-2025 transition to remote operated vehicles with quantum supercomputers, uh, snot-nosed 12-year-old super geniuses at playing video games, okay, and of course they'll eventually get rid of them too, and also um, genetically engineered chimeric cyborgs, and they uh, are doing this. They succeeded in cloning super soldiers in 1982 at the Moscow Institute for Biological Research with American and Russian scientists as well as others. They have been working on cloning since 1927 attempts by the Nazi Germans and have succeeded effectively with Russian women as the hosts for cloning super soldiers since 1982. It's not difficult. And their plan, and I was told this directly, when they tried to recruit me to UCLA VA Wadsworth Hospital here in Santa Monica, in 1977, when I was going to work on the World MS Tissue Repository under Dr. Wallace Tortolot, one project was to work as his PhD student uh, doing research on multiple sclerosis because my first wife was dying of MS. <clears throat> and the other four projects, three of them were to actually take prisoners from West Orange and Irvine penitentiaries and wet wire their auditory and visual and other cortex, as well as their rage and calming nuclei with platinum and palladium wires using a CT scan uh, custom made implanter that was hooked up to a CT scanner to make sure they got in the right nuclei so that you could remote wire them and control their brains. Well, they went on beyond that with Dr. Delgado's research in the 80s and succeeded at very, very stoutly in being able to create scalar technologies that were very effective that could remotely control you without any need for implants. <clears throat> Finances, they want to control medicine. That's why when you see the national ID of the national medical system coming, banking, activities, medical, military, fines, info and control, Library access, high definition TV. If you ever heard of the 25, uh, 25th frame phenomena, they want these things. You're using neurolinguistic programming and TV commercials and news, uh, inserting through uh, sound and light and other scalar technologies that are satellite based, inserting ideas, paralyzing the mind. Uh, now spraying, by the way, sulfuryl fluoride, which fries the pineal gland, which is the hyperspace connection between the higher centers of your cortex and the higher dimensional planes of what you are as a, as a spirit being, and they're actually trying to poison that thing called the, called the silver cord. They know that if they can calcify the pineal gland, they can disconnect your spirit body with your physical body or interfere with it. 
And the reason is because you as a spirit understand and know things that you can not always explain in physical words, but you know that things aren't right. Just like an animal before a tsunami or an earthquake knows something's real damn wrong and how come Deagle knows all this stuff? They want to insert thoughts in your mind and they want to program you. And they're doing it right now. And that's why when you see all these high definition TV, why is all this stuff out there? Well, it's all out there because they're programming you with everything they got in their bucket. Um, international rights of the mind. And we need to have a rights of the mind. We're talking about rights, privacy, databases. And this table is a little busy, but you'll see I talk about, I talk about a lot of things there. Can you see it now? We talk about rights, global rights, travel, finance, constitutional rights. Um, we need to have an amendment to the U.S. Constitution that the right of the person's mind to not be interfered with excitotoxins like aspartame and, uh, and, uh, and um, MSG and other excitotoxins with nanotech. By the way, nanotech foods are direct invasion of your brain. These new vaccines, 275 of them, many of them are psychoneurotronic. They actually create plaque against certain nuclei and areas or, or receptors. So stop you from being able to be addicted to alcohol, cocaine, cigarettes, but they also rewire the normal encephalins and beta endorphins, et cetera, in your brain, and they change who you are. They also have specific uh, uh, vectors that can change your literal genetics, and it can actually change what you are. This is not imaginary. This is real. And then if we look at assault on consciousness, and you can see this, and you can see the little wedge there of consciousness. <clears throat> you want to have, they want you to have no integrity of the person, no independence, no individual utility. In other words, if you don't have any utility, just like the Nazi German says, you know, work to live, work to live, you know. And they want to literally migrate us to transhumanity and a caste system where they genetically and cybernetically and nanotech um, rich will be the super class with extended lifespans of millennia and the rest of us will have terminator genes to make us die quickly like light bulbs and then take the small vacuum to get the ashes minutes later. And then of course their idea to transition to a hive mind, uh, the idea of thought crime being a part of that. And here is the, uh, the real nub of it. The global action plan is to deal with a bill of rights of the mind, U.S. constitutional amendment, and amendments that need to be adopted in other countries. And we need nations. Strong nations are not anathema to a rational collective that deals with world issues. Uh, the plan that they try to force is their plan for a new world order is a plan without nations and without walls, which is evil. Uh, the idea of having exchangeable currencies is reasonable, but the idea of a global proxy uh, fractional reserve electronic currency that's totally trackable and controlled so they can press alt delete and you do not exist either in cyberspace or in reality is the reality of what's coming. They can take your license, they can take your money, they can take your possessions with imminent domain and they can literally take your identity and who you are and they want to wipe your mind clean like a slate. Um, privacy, integrity, barriers and control are the four issues that need to be dealt with and we need to have this amendment very quickly and Dr. Nick Begich has been you know, going to be on my show regularly probably once a month talking about this because if we don't have a rights to the mind, the new battleground of the 21st century is not a biological weapons battleground or an ROV cyber technology battleground. It is a battleground of consciousness in the mind because uh, it has been said that I care not who controls the politics of a nation but who makes the money. And I will make an addendum to that today. I care not who prints the money or even owns the printing presses as long as I control consciousness. And that's the end of this talk, and then we'll uh, have a little break and we'll get to talk number three. Right. Do you want to modify it? Yeah, sure, see if you can. He's got that. He's got that look like I know monitors. Okay. Uh, oh, you got it. You got it. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I, I, there's something been in the back of my mind. Uh, in, in the recent news, you've heard about the uh, con conviction and the death of Kenneth Lay of Enron. Oh yes. Yeah. You mean they laid him down? <laughs> well, it's it, it's always been uh, a, a question in my mind as to whether that was a natural death. 
I, well, it depends I, on how natural it was. As they say, you know, when you retire from the uh, CIA, you're always double tapped. Well, I... Uh, I would imagine he's one of their minions who decided to minion the wrong way. And uh, that's what's planned, by the way. And this is an announcement for all those who are in the NSA, special ops, Delta, the government, billionaires alike. You have to realize I'm your best buddy. I don't care how smart or how smart or how rich you are. I know what the hell's going on, and I'm trying to save your ass and the ass of few, your grandchildren for a thousand generations. And if you don't listen to me today, and you don't remember what I'm saying now or a thousand or ten thousand years from now, you will face the same future that we are nearly facing that the people Atlantis and Lemuria did with the exact same technology. Recent news, you've heard about the uh, con conviction. Okay. Uh, oh, you got, a yes. you got okay. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I, I, there's something been in the back of my mind. Uh, in, in the recent news, You've heard about the uh, con conviction and the death of Kenneth Lay of Enron. Oh, yes, yeah. You mean they laid him down? <laughs> well, it's, it, it's always been uh, uh, a question in my mind as to whether that was a natural death. I, well, it depends I, on how natural it was. As they say, you know, when you retire from the uh, CIA, you're always double tapped. Well, I... I would imagine he's one of their minions who decided to minion the wrong way. And uh, that's what's planned, by the way. And this is an announcement for all those who are in the NSA, special ops, Delta, the government, billionaires alike. You have to realize I'm your best buddy. I don't care how smart or how smart or how rich you are. I know what the hell's going on, and I'm trying to save your ass and the ass of few, your grandchildren for a thousand generations. And if you don't listen to me today, and you don't remember what I'm saying now, or a thousand or ten thousand years from now. You will face the same future that we are nearly facing that the people Atlantis and Lemuria did with the exact same technologies 12,000 years ago. This is what we're facing. We are facing the end of civilization with scalar technologies, nuclear nanotechnologies, and even technologies that were given to us by civilizations elsewhere in this cosmos that have no business being here like Morgellons. This is a silicon-based life form that did not originate in our part of the galaxy. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Deagle? Yes. Uh, if I uh, could just uh, ask, do you feel that uh, Mr. Lay uh, really requested to be, uh, you know, uh, killed uh, so that he could uh, have his family fortune protected, you know, through this legal ruling? God knows what they did eventually. Uh, I, I wouldn't speculate, but all I can say is that a lot of the people at the top, and I don't care if they're uh, movie stars or their corporate presidents, whatever, and they've gone to the Grove or they've done evil, I want them to repent right now because I could have been an Anakin Skywalker and become a Godard's Vader. I've been, I've been presented with the opportunity three times by the Pindar to become his understudy to the corporation of Earth that runs everything. I could have been a very evil man, but I chose to go toward the light and not darkness. And I don't care if they've done darkness, I don't care if they've eaten children, I don't care if they've done the most horrendous things. They need to repent now because it's the end of our civilization. We need to stop the balkanization based on religion, color, or anything else. They're doing this because they're ready to finish us off. In the next one to two years is the turning point in history. We are now being held in judgment, not on our earth, but on off earth. Uh, and we're dealing with a situation that's galactic in scope. We're not just dealing with a problem on this planet. Our world leaders are not telling what is really happening on this planet. They are lying, they are frightened, they are quivering jellyfish. And they need to stop because our planet is being held in judgment. And we have 200 dead zones in our oceans. The uh, Antarctica is not just melting because of the uh, approach in Nibiru, and we have our ozone layer, but we are about to destroy the all living things with depleted uranium. If we start a nuclear war, even a small one, it's been calculated 350 megaton warheads will cause a nuclear winter and there'll be no crops in most of the northern hemisphere for the next three and a half years. We have three to five days of food. 
Within 30 days, half of the population of North America will be dead without war, without another Katrina, without a nuclear bomb going off in Chicago, Denver, or San Diego, or Los Angeles. That's the reality. As cruel as it is, I'm a trauma doctor, I'm a burn doctor, I'm a realist, I'm an optimist, but optimism starts from the point of reality first, planning second, and response third, rather than being a victim. Yeah, yeah, come, come on over here, yeah. Yeah, come on over so we can hear here. Yeah, your, your question, your first name is? Got, Annette, I've got a quick question. If a person encountered a situation where they wanted to kill themselves instantly, what would be a substance that they could take? Why would somebody want to kill themselves? I don't know, but if they needed to, what could I, you do? I'd much rather have to give somebody else the pleasure of killing me while I'm trying to kill them. <laughs> In that case, what could they use? Well, there's all kinds of ways. I don't, I don't want to elaborate on that. I, let's put it this way. They have these uh, little bottles they keep on taking the airline. You, have, you can't bring water bottles on. And they, 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 they try acetone, try peroxide bombs. Total garbage. Yeah. Those bombs, you can only make at very low temperatures. You have to be basically almost freezing in order to actually create them. They're so unstable, they literally burn your hands off. So when they try to say this, they realize that most people haven't passed first year chemistry and don't understand it. I know at least a half a dozen ways that could take a jet airliner down with something I can take on my person that nobody would ever find, detect by any molecular means. I know lots of ways of making directed energy and other types of weapons that I can manufacture by going to the local hardware store. They could basically outtake somebody with a 50 caliber gun. So if they really want to pick a fight, they're going to pick it with the wrong guy. And my buddies are very, very brave. They will stand up. And this government better take notice that we are not going to put up with them selling out to globalists. They themselves are putting themselves and their own daughters. George Bush's daughters are in jeopardy. They're breathing depleted uranium. As we stand here breathing today, we're breathing four to eight times the amount of nanoparticles of depleted uranium that they allow a uranium miner by the Environmental Protection Agency. We are about to turn the earth into a dying cinder with our DNA being fried by depleted uranium, which looks like, as we approach the Christmas season, if you look under a scanning electron microscope, they look like little Christmas balls under the microscope. These are one nanoparticle will kill you. One nanoparticle. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, my name is Bill. This okay, is such a happy presentation. I'm about ready to go to the other side. Well, don't. No, see, I'm there's always a positive side. side. That's why I bring people down, and you see in the other presentation, I bring them back up. But the thing is, I believe in this. You never show the children the edge of the bottomless abyss without ma real making them realize that they have wings. Excellent. There's okay. always a solution, but you have to ask the right questions. And what I really get disturbed by is people who focus on one or two issues alone whether they call themselves patriots or whatever, and not connecting all the dots or realizing that at the end of their matrix, there's another matrix. And there's many patriots, and I won't mention names, that say they don't like whistleblowers. They're a dime a dozen. We are the cannon fodder of the New World Order. We are the backbone that the journalists receive our information. And I'm, my message today is to all the whistleblowers, the people who are getting administrative renditions, whether they're doctors like me, attorneys, military personnel, special forces, government bureaucrats of this and every other country. You need to stand up and realize we want to stand with you because we know that you know what the hell's going on, whether you're that Canadian that works on the Aurora spacecraft will fly between here and our moon base that's, uh, that's mining helium-3 on that city, or our colony on Mars, or our space platforms, or our Star Wars-based technology and weapon systems that they keep lying about to the Canadians and other people saying, someday we'll weaponize space. They want the Canadians to know, so if they ever shoot anything down that's radioactive, you won't complain when most of Ontario becomes radioactive. Mm. That's why they want to make sure the Canadians are on board because it's already up there and has been for decades. Question then about um, who's behind all this. Is it Michael Tessarian and the, um, his, if you're familiar with his alien um, Anunnaki? I'm going to get into that stuff. Okay. That's part of my next talks. Uh, that's why I want you to understand that we're dealing with not just a human war, we're dealing with a war of, of uh, as, it say, as it says in the Bible, which has some truth, we are at war not with uh, flesh and blood, but both principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. We're dealing with transdimensional and what I call life and life, and I'll explain that later in one of my slides. 
Uh, we're dealing with beings that are far beyond the range in the, uh, of the mundane existence of normal human beings that are in higher dimensional planes and galactic areas and in worlds far beyond ours. And they have transferred technologies and made treaties with our governments and traded in human flesh uh, to the great disgrace of our governments for decades. And uh, this evil has to stop now. And uh, we had uh, the Red Cross and Dime Corporation had, uh, for example, the equivalent of four stadiums of women and children that disappeared in Eastern Europe alone just in the year 2005 and the Red Cross in Europe actually gave them notice. Now where do you think they disappeared? They didn't just disappear to brothels and uh, uh, body houses in Israel and Saudi Arabia, which are the two primary places, or in facilities off of Africa and pleasure palaces that are in the, uh, these large cruise ships. No, they disappeared in underground laboratories where there's genetic experiments done on them and horrendous things. They disappeared in off-world facilities and they disappeared in space platforms orbiting around the Earth. They disappeared in other facilities where there's you know, unspeakable things that I won't mention to you, otherwise I'll lose it, that are happening to these human beings because our gutless governments have made treaties with these beings. And you need to know that that's a reality. It's not imaginary. That's where they've got a lot of this technology. <coughs> uh, during the last uh, few days, there was a rather frightening story about a Russian scientist dying of uranium poisoning. Yeah, it was actually polonium-210. And, and plus others, others have died, uh, <laughs> and they're talking about they, they have to uh, do the autopsy in spacesuits. It does seem to go along with what you're saying. I, I just wanted to get your take on that. Well, what I've seen so far, and I've heard some theories, uh, one of the theories that seems to hold more water, and again, I don't know all the details, is that it was actually not done by the Russians, but it was done by the British, because what the British have been trying to do is, is stage a, a uh, takeover of Russia, because what happened is last year, Mr. Putin said, I'll be a nice boy to you bankers in London and the Rothschilds, and I'll make sure all of our nice Russian oil money goes directly in your nice Rothschild banks. Until finally, and you see now Putin, although he may be a short guy, he's a tough guy. And he's, he's also a Russian. I believe he's stepping down for somebody else, is he not? Well, we'll see. Okay. And besides, a lot of times these guys are more powerful when they're no longer in the front line. Okay. They're behind the scenes being the puppeteers. And uh, Vladimir Putin was probably actually set up, they probably killed uh, this guy, Litvinenko, the British did, because they've been trying to actually stage a coup in Russia, just like they had tried to carry orange revolutions off in other countries over there, because they have to neutralize the Russians, because the Russians have advanced scalar weapons, they have the advanced Topol M missile, they have the most advanced anti-aircraft missiles and systems in the world, they have the most advanced biological weapon systems in the world that were developed in Russia, and they have scalar technologies decades beyond America, although America's built very big systems like the HARP system, the one in, the, in um, uh, off in the Pacific in uh, Diego, Garcia, and elsewhere. Uh, these systems are very advanced, but the Russians have been decades and decades ahead. That's why uh, rather than using thermal standards for their radiation effects, uh, even 50 years ago, the Russians had radiation levels that were 10,000 times lower because they could see non-thermal cellular effects with scalar signals as long as 70 years ago. So the Russians are very aware of the effects of scalar uh, technology on biological systems in human cells, which is why they don't allow the kinds of levels of radiation. We have 100,000 times as much harmonic radiation in our cities, like in the city in Los Angeles, than there was 10 years ago. And the most deadly poison on Earth is not heavy metals or even depleted uranium. It's scalar harmonic uh, energies coming off everything from your cell phones to your grids. And all they need to do is pump a signal along that has scalar signals that's biocoded to, your, to specific centers in your brain to insert ideas, to kill, to, to uh, make you confused or to make you fall asleep. And they can make entire populations do whatever they want or kill you. Mm -hmm. And they can do that today. Yes, go ahead. I just wanted to ask you, uh, how did you acquire all this information? It's an incredible amount. I think you said you had a photographic memory. Fairly close. Mm -hmm. And you seem to remember everything you've been told. Is that Pretty close. Yeah, that's really remarkable. It's a gift that I was given, I think, for this moment. And you'll see uh, that I've been called not only as a doctor and a scientist, but I'm called here, when you see my other talks, I'm called to speak as a prophet. 
And uh, I'm not I'm take, talking about in the words of the prophets of the ancient ages, like the last great prophet, Yeshua HaMashiach, who was the uh, prophet who spoke about the age of Pisces, who actually presented to us choices. And we're at the same point in time in history now where we're presented choices. And this choice, though, in this time is greater than even the time of Atlantis and Lemuria because the level of technologies we have and the transfer of technologies from advanced cultures in different parts of our cosmos has put us in the, in the edge of a galactic battle that's so, co that's so serious that it may literally kill everything on our planet forever. Hi. Go ahead. Have you heard of Ray Kurzweil's new book, The Singularity? Yes, we're in fact approaching uh, the, uh, the singularity is actually the combination of nanotechnologies and artificial intelligence and all these other things, but it's also the transfer of technologies from advanced cultures from other parts. Part of this is very evil and violates cosmic law. And the other thing is we're approaching a thing called the nexus, which is a precision of the equinox, as I mentioned earlier. As our galaxy rotates through the galactic plane, we're actually approaching a protein energy uh, ion field that actually, this proton ion field actually is a rent in the space-time continuum that occurred with an ancient war. And uh, so we're actually approaching the same point in space-time, and we're asked the same questions, which is exactly why the Mayans talked about a circular calendar because he said if you knew the past, the ancient past, you could also predict the future. Because in my view, our universe, when you look forward, you're looking into the ancient past. Uh, Dr. Beagle, if uh, we're going to have all these cataclysms uh, coming up, where a tremendous devastation is going to take place, most of the people in the world are going to die, why is the New World Order going through the meticulous process of creating the North American... Uh, union, the Central American Union, South American Union, the Asian Union, the African Union, European Union. Why they, uh, that's not going to be necessary. Why, why are they doing this? They're doing it for several reasons. You'll notice that if you look at the, uh, tr the, uh, at the treaties of, for the seas, they're moving in inland waterways in most of the major continents. Okay? For example, the Three Gorges Dam in China, the, the whole construction project was taken over by the Carlisle Group under orders of the Queen and the Jesuits. And a, a year and a half ago, they actually took over all of the construction of the largest construction company on Earth, which is in China. 80% of the concrete on Earth is now used in building these dragon cities along the Chinese coast. Their whole idea is that they're building central transportation routes because they know the coastal areas are going to hit by super tsunamis. They know that there are going to be global Earth changes where the continents are going to completely change. Good parts of California will disappear and there will be a chain of islands. They know that the tsunami will hit the west coast of America with the passage of Nibiru, and uh, this tsunami will be at Mach 1, traveling at 740 miles an hour all the way to the west slope of the Rockies. They know the east coast is going to be hit with the Cumbra Viejo uh, super tsunami that will be 300 meters high, traveling at 540 miles an hour. And this is not speculation. If you have a major geotectonic event, such as the movement of a hypergravitational object, whether it's 5, 10, or 500 years from now, it will result in it. The same way as the blowing up of the super caldera in Wyoming will result in a global winter that will last from three to five years minimum. Uh, and the extinction of most of the species on Earth except for those who have water and food and other ways of survival. So we're facing a, a cataclysm, but they're planning on having remnants of population survive in the center of continents because they figure they can have that plus their underground cities. There's over 1,500 cities. Uh, the city, for example, between Conifer and I-70 can house, uh, eight, uh, can house uh, almost 18,000 people underground for a minimum of seven years plus with nuclear reactors, hydroponics, hospitals, and even shopping. Uh, they're quite capable of the cities. The ones in Russia, they built multiple cities that are fairly large with manufacturing facilities, etc. They can house a quarter million people in each city under the central Ural Mountains. So they're all prepared. They have the same thing in Korea and China and elsewhere. Uh, for the coming global, global cataclysms, and uh, they don't want to tell the populations because 80% of the population of Earth lives within 100 miles of the coast, which I think is a criminal activity on the parts of the global governments, not warning people that these events are coming. Uh, super, super storms, tornadoes like the one that hit London today, all of these are an example of the gutless activity of our world leaders who should not be ruling, uh, and the reason is because they will not speak the truth. And that goes with my medical profession, who are a strong leg of the New World Disorder with their medical procedures, their chips, their vaccines. They will be one of the, they will be the Dr. Mengele's of the Fourth Reich. The hierarchies of power within the New World Order, we have the Jesuits, 
the Rothschilds, the British royal family, some of the royal families of Europe. Right. But you've heard that, that there are some ETs or or interdimensional beings that direct these people or control I'll, these people? I'll, I'll explain it. Uh, down through all civilizations in history, all civilizations, where you call them the term Masons or you call them these uh, sacred high priests, whether it's an ancient Lemuria, Atlantis, or other civilizations from Samaria, Egypt, all of these ancient civilizations did a process which is similar to mind controlling that they used um, uh, at uh, Guantanamo Bay and Gitmo and elsewhere. They created what's called a split in the personality and altars. They're using a uh, Reikian programming that's used to actually create a, a new altar or a sub-personality that can be inhabited by an astral entity. Human beings can only arise to the 180th degree within Mason. The word human actually means serpent man, meaning indwelt by an astral entity. All medical schools, all higher university educational institutions in all countries done through all history have been inhabited by these beings because it's part of the process of getting higher levels within any secret fraternity or order, whether you're a lawyer, a judge, or a politician, or a corporate uh, president. For example, when people make the mistake saying they see uh, beings shapeshift, they're actually just seeing with their spirit eyes, which they do have, they're seeing the hyperdimensional entities, which may be reptilian in shape, but they're actually not looking at a shape shifting, which violates the laws of thermodynamics because it explodes with heat. They're actually seeing that those families have had lineal uh, passage <coughs> of, of sex and blood sacrifices down through their families through history, like Hillary Clinton, who, whose family has been one of the leading Luciferian uh, evil families in American history, the Rodhams. Uh, that's why they're so intimately tied with this. So if you look at all these families down through history, what you're looking at is you're looking at a human flesh husk that is surrounding a bioplasmatic astral entity which is guiding that just like a, uh, a, uh, a uh, controlled object. So uh, the higher levels of masonry above the 180th degree uh, are all non-human. So the 360th degree. So if you understand that that has been the nature of all human history, not just some of it, then you start to get a grasp on how we have been very, very Earth-centric and not realizing we're in a, not only a galaxy and a cosmos, but we're dealing with many dimensions beyond the third and fourth, and we're dealing with a very vast universe, and we're dealing with physics and laws that the level of ignorance of our populations has been purposeful because if you don't know what you are, as I always say, if we knew what we were, we would not do what we do. The problem comes that we do not know what we are, therefore they're in control. And they hide the very nature of reality that we are the masters of our fate because we are the thousand points of light, not them. We are made in the image of the Most High God. We are literally the rulers of this universe, but we have had our identity hidden. We have been in a state of unconsciousness, and we've had it taken away by religion, who have always substituted a formula for a pathway. And there is, as Yeshua HaMashiach said, that your religion, your traditions, nullify the way. Which is why the first three centuries, the Greek Orthodox, who understood correctly, knew that Jesus was not God. He was becoming fused to become a God. And that he was on the pathway, so what he was teaching, and he was called the teacher of the way. He was not called the Christ. All of these things were created later by the Luciferian Catholic Church that wanted to turn into a Babylonian myth, including the virgin birth, so that they could manipulate the population and control them so they wouldn't realize that Jesus himself said, when I return, you shall do even greater things, for you shall be exactly as I am, not different. That's the real gospel. Okay? Three-minute break, and then it's part three. How's that? <laughs>